What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Dual Sense Podcast. This is episode 41. I'm one of your co hosts, Jason, and I'm joined again today, as always, as usual, by Travis, my other co host. Travis, what's good? Not much, just, you know, got the greenest yard in the neighborhood. Oh, yeah. Your uh, grass seed? Is it, is it uh, blossoming? Yeah, uh, two of my other neighbors started working on their yard, and then my other neighbor uh, started working on his landscaping today. So, hmm. I think I think I think I started something amongst the, um, the dads. You got a you got a well, you have a friendly neighborhood rivalry, uh, and you do you you have a Facebook group for your neighborhood. Is that correct? Yeah, they mostly just complain about uh, toys in the road, hmm. um, getting your grass clippings off of the sidewalk, so when people old women walk, they can't see the grass, stuff like that. Uh, one woman said, move your bikes out of the sidewalk. I'm blind and I can't see. Well, like, Christ. Well, uh, how are you walking then with by yourself? <laughs> You're blind. I have a lot of questions. Like, yeah. it shouldn't matter then. Whatever. You whatever. should have your, you should have your cane or whatever, regardless if you're blind. Right. You can't just trust that nobody has shit on the sidewalk. I got a lot of questions. Like, are you sure it was a bike? <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah. How did you fucking know it was a bike and not like a car? Or... Did you kind of feel it? Yeah. Imagine imagine somebody coming into your driveway and just like making love to your car and, and you find out that they're blind and they're trying to f- identify the item. Right. I guess yeah. that's just as bad as her banging it with her damn stick. So <laughs> I never thought about that. Ooh, that what? pissed me off. Yeah, just echolocate like a bat. Save us all the trouble. Yeah. How come we haven't evolved? You know, how come blind people, blind humans over all these thousands of years haven't evolved to have, you know, echolocation? That's pretty... That's a pretty big failure uh, of nature as far as I'm concerned. My assumption is that they used to just die out. Like, <laughs> like yeah. if you're blind on the Serengeti, it's like, listen, he, the lion's going to get Ted. I don't know what you want to He's blind. I can't fucking hold his hands for 40 years. I don't know what you want me to do. Everybody's standing back eating their fucking like lamb chop or whatever. And then Ted's <laughs> walking out into the yeah. pack of lions. Yeah. So like it falls off a cliff. Like, I, what are we going to do? Yeah, it, was, well, it was coming. Yeah. Fair enough. Anyway, Travis, this is a playstation podcast where you and i get together each and every week to discuss all the news rumors new game releases and a little bit more in the world of playstation we post new episodes every monday on all of the usual podcast services around the globe and we also post new episodes on youtube on our youtube channel which is called the dual sense podcast where you can also check out some of our game streams and clips if that interests you and if you want to talk with us or, uh, you know, tell us we suck or that you love us or an idea or whatever, hit us up on Twitter at the dual sense pod. And without further ado, talk to me about what uh, you've been playing this past week. I played FIFA, but I don't remember much about it. I, I, I know I won some games, um, but nothing, <laughs> nothing memorable happened. I think I scored a scorpion goal like Olivier Girard did in real life. Um, oh, that's sick. That, that was pretty sweet. I, I didn't, I don't know how I did it. I put some battlefield clips up on our YouTube, on our YouTube's there. Uh, mm-hmm. Just some weird stuff that happened, stuff I thought was kind of funny, mm-hmm. uh, just kind of weird situations. But anyway, um, we've been we've been cranking that out. It's been pretty good. The, the, whatever updates they've done have helped a lot. Um, mm-hmm. It's you know it's not as solid as one or four or three. <laughs> um, it's better than Heartline or Hardline, not Heartline. Heartline played quarterback at Kentucky. Anyway, he, he did. But yeah, so um, the thing I like about it is when you're playing um, operations, when the flags move, you know, you, you're, you're, maybe you can snipe or you could do assault or you could do medic. Like you kind of bounce around with the different classes on, you know, the yeah. way the maps were on one, you pretty much could just lock into any class you wanted. So, mm-hmm. you know, the, the it is more versatile in that way, I think, which is a good thing. So hopefully six will at least keep that versatility. Some of the maps we played, though, were like impossible. Yeah, I don't even remember what they're called. I can't remember them. The fell fell forty nine or whatever fell forty nine. Where you're in the in the mountains? 
Right. It's like, it's mm-hmm. almost like every, the way I feel like some of those maps are designed is like the first three are really easy and the last one's really hard, like at Wake Island. <laughs> yeah, like that, you, yeah. You, we, we, they had like 400 tickets and we still beat them somehow. Yeah. And then there's other ones like, I, I guess the, the, the snowy one, the fell one, it's the other way around. Like the first one is just super hard. And I feel like if you, if you break through that, you'll steamroll them at that point. Mm-hmm. But anyway, it's been fun. I haven't done anything fun. I haven't, I still haven't flown a plane yet. So I haven't either. I, now that you say that I literally have not since we've been playing these past couple of weeks, I haven't been in one a single time. Yeah, and we saw a guy that was level 450. I don't think he stopped playing. He's uh, been playing it for three straight years. Which is interesting. And he was very good, by the way. Very good. Mm-hmm. Was he the guy with the plane that was like 52 and 0 and he, just, he would just swoop down and bomb everybody? Yeah, he'd dive bomb the whole time. <laughs> what a mm-hmm. dick. Oh, uh, anyway. He got bored. He had to do something. So uh, <clears throat> my plan this week was um, when my wife left, I was going to play Hitman, but she ended up doing something um, earlier this week. So I played the uh, Death in the Family level, the second one on Hitman mm-hmm. 3. And I don't care to spoil any of this for people so they can just they can just skip ahead. Spoiler alert. I think we did a similar action where we both we both went in as the detective. Mm. Um I solved the crime. I got all the clues using the camera. I did have to look up two clues that were very hard to find. And one of them was just because I wasn't walking close enough to prompt it. The other one was because I had the camera out and it wouldn't prompt anything else and it took me like twenty minutes to figure out I needed to put the camera up. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then it just was right there. I was like, oh. Because like I, I figured there was something there, but I couldn't I couldn't figure it out. It was just me uh, being stupid. That mission's probably one of my favorites. It's um, The pacing is very different from the other missions. Um, because you're the detective, you can just walk around and do whatever you want. Right. You Yeah, literally, no. Like, there's maybe one person that'll stop you the whole time. And, like... All the every other mission, there's so much, you know, you gotta have fifteen different disguises and you gotta, you know, remember where you put things, if you have to double back, this, that, and the other. And that's fine. Like there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that it's, you know, it's it's a different way to play. Mm-hmm. You can play that way. You could if you don't, you know, take over the detective, then you have to play that way. Um, yeah. I'm not sure how you could do it that way without starting without beating that level and then going back and starting somewhere else like inside of the house or something i think yeah. you do it then but like just just to start outside of the the grounds and wander in because it's like it's like the godfather it's like a it's like a compound like right <laughs> you got to sneak your way in there but um yeah you gotta be really fucking good but anyway um i solved the murder and then it let me basically i sat down and talked to the woman the target and it was like it prompted up and it was like, you know, you can tell her that you want the file hmm. or you can tell her you want whatever else. And then, you, but then you still have to kill her and she was right there. So I'm thinking like, if I don't ask her to give me the file, like, how am I going to sneak back up here? Because you couldn't go up into that room without somebody with you. That was one of the places you couldn't go. So anyway, I, she gave me the file. She walked out onto the balcony and um, I closed the door. And then threw her off the balcony and then decided that was boring. So, yeah, that's what I did. They found her body and then I was like, I don't, that was too easy. So I reloaded it and then I hit her with a feather duster and knocked her out. <laughs> and then I, and then I dumped her in a box after I snapped her neck. So that was yeah, way more had, fun. Yeah. You had to get the next snap. This, the next snap is one of my favorites. Anyway, yeah. so I beat that one. Um, the, on the leaderboard, I was like a minute faster than you and our, our score was within 300 points. Jesus Christ. So uh, the only difference I could think of is you must have not got all the clues. Uh, I did camera. Yeah, the camera threw me off. Other than that, we basically must have played that pretty much identical, which is kind of wild to think about to be that close in the score. And the reason I say that is the next level where you're at the nightclub and it doesn't tell you what your targets are. You just find them as you go. Mm-hmm. Um, I beat that one earlier today and um, we weren't even close. Like, you like did you did way more than me or what? Yeah, you did it probably 30 minutes faster than me, but I had like double your points. Jesus Christ. What were you doing? I don't know. I was just taking my time. Like one of the kills I got was completely situational. Like I, I happened to pick up a wrench. I came around a corner and there was a, there was a pipe there. So I just turned it on because I thought <laughs> that might be useful. 
And I walked away and right when I walked away, it popped up and it was like, this guy was, it was one of the guys. And I was like, shit, and I had to like duck down behind a tree. Like that's how close I was to him. I like walked into him and then he walks in front of me and goes and stands by this thing and then exploded and killed him. And I was like, shit. Okay. So I that's got like, some, I got some sort of multiplier killer for that because it like was unseen. Nobody heard it. And then he fell in the water. So it got rid of his body. Then it was an explosive kill. It was like a four multiplier. And then, um, there was one of them that I couldn't. I could have been really careful with it. And the place I messed up was I didn't go delete the security camera film. Mm, yeah. And I found it and I found it, but I do this sometimes. So I found it and I got so wrapped up in the story. I was like, you know, the idea of you killing these people is um, to send a message. So I thought I want to leave the security camera so they can see me. And I, and I killed the guy, one of the guys in the security room. He like walked in and I just stood up and like hit him with a screwdriver and he fell over and I walked off. <laughs> I don't even remember the other ones. I just remember those two because like I had a really hard time with the guy killed with the screwdriver because I couldn't figure out how to, how to do it because I couldn't take out the other guys in the room without them seeing it. Right. It was just too much. And even when I threw things outside of the window for them to try to get them to come out of the room, they would just look out the window and it wouldn't let me pull them out of the window. I swear you used to be able to pull people out of windows. Yeah. You still can't. Well, yeah, maybe not on three, but I know I did on the others. So I don't know, maybe I wasn't prompting it right, but the other people I got pretty well. That 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 level was really cool. It's designed really well. There's a million ways you could do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. That's one I don't know if I'll go back and do. The one I'm on right now is the one where you're, you're trying to get into the facility, um, and there's two people you got to kill. It's like a woman that looks like Elsa, and then an Asian man. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I met a. I, f I found like three or four points where I could do it in different ways. So that's interesting. That one's that one's. T I I remember that one. That one's kind of tough. Uh, if it's what I'm thinking it is, that one's kind of tough. It, it's been difficult. I've had to reload it. A, I, at one point, I just replanned and restarted the mission. Yeah, because I needed to go back, and I almost took a few things and I didn't. And then when I got into the game, I knew I re I needed those things, and that might have just been because I was already thinking about them. But mm -hmm. yeah, it was just easier to restart. But anyway, long story short, working my way through Hitman. Nice. It's awesome. It's a good time. It is. Uh, the third, that third mission, the the nightclub you're talking about, that that was one of my favorites. That's one of the three that I really enjoyed in three, mm -hmm. and I, I may like it better than the mansion. I don't know, but anyway, it's awesome. It's so it's so wide open is what makes it fun, and there's like a yeah. million different ways you can do it, and there's a hundred different disguises, and yeah, and people aren't so like some of those levels are so difficult to even get a disguise in the first place, and then that one is like if you're patient, you can get all of it done pretty easily mm -hmm. well i uh, also played fifa a little bit this week um just with uh, saint johnston just continuing the career nothing really new to report there and we played battlefield 5 like you uh, mentioned and i don't know it's been fun i like doing i like playing it it's it's been good it's been good to us so far and then the, the last thing really that i've been playing this week is i decided to go back to ratchet and clank from 2016 I I stopped playing it and I decided I was just going to go back to it because I was like halfway through it and uh it's it's a good game and it it's got some funny moments you know like some some borderline uh, like humor I guess like <laughs> naughty humor that should make you laugh like there's a character whose name is Skid McMarks and uh, for instance and stuff like that so it's got some wit to it and I enjoy that the the different like weapons you can get are pretty cool there's mm -hmm. good v variety and just different stuff it's not like it is still like rocket launcher and pistol whatever but there's other stuff like a disco ball you throw and it makes everybody start dancing and then they don't attack so you can just do whatever to them so but however today this morning i was getting ready to beat the game and i got to the final boss battle and it was ridiculous like i could not kill the guy and then when you die, you had to start it all over, like totally over. There's no yeah. checkpoint system on the boss battle, nothing like that. So you could get him down to like 7% health and you die, start all over. I did that like three or four times and I I got frustrated and I you said, you know what? I'm done with this. So I'm done with it. Uh, I've beat it as far as I'm concerned. I get it. You kill the, kill the bad guy, save the universe, cut scene, yada, yada. So I get it. I don't need to go back to it and get more mad at it. So I finished with that and deleted it. So I'll be ready for Rift Apart in June. And hopefully they don't uh, 
I don't know. Maybe it's just me. It's probably just me. I'm sure other people didn't have a problem with it. But for me, it was insanely stupid, that last battle. But it looks good. They just did a 60 frames update for it this week, like literally yesterday, I think. And it looks it looked so much better. Mm-hmm. I'm becoming a 60 frames snob pretty quickly. <laughs> and that's really it. So with that, uh, let's get into the news here. Travis. Number one. Sony confirmed this week that the PlayStation 3, PlayStation Portable, and PlayStation Vita stores will indeed be closing down in the near future. As we reported last week, the PS3 and PSP stores will be shuttered on July 2nd, while the, P- while the Vita store will survive a bit longer, shutting down on August 27th. Players will no longer be able to make any purchases from the store after these dates, but thankfully any digital content that you own before the closures will still be able to be downloaded. This includes game and video purchases as well as claimed PlayStation Plus games for as long as you remain a member. Players will also have still have the ability to download any cross-buy games they purchased in the in the past or in the future. Following the shutdown, some 2,200 2, games will no longer be available to purchase digitally on a PlayStation console. Some of the 2,200 will become exclusive to Xbox consoles, while 120 PlayStation exclusive games will be lost forever. And finally, following the announcement, a number of developers announced that their in-development Vita projects had been canceled, while two developers, Spooky Squid Games and Suicidal Robot Games, released a statement saying that they were rushing to the finish line to attempt to get their games out before August 27th. So do you have any thoughts on this? I know know you're not playing any of these consoles, but what do you think? I mean, you don't consider the PSP and the Vita a console, right? You consider them a handheld? How does that work? Yeah, I mean, I think people call them handheld console consoles, you know, but uh, they're hand, but they're handhelds. Yeah, I'll I'll buy that. Um, yeah, it's really shitty for the people that or these developers that were working on their games, and now it's just like, hey, that doesn't exist anymore. Like, yeah, you'd think they'd have a little bit more notice than that. That, that sucks ass. Um, yeah, I mean, God, they're gonna be doing like suicidal crunch to get that shit done before August. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I know it's four or five months, but still, it's just crazy. Yeah, I honestly, I was going back to last week. I was surprised the PSP store was still a thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> True, it, it blows my mind because I feel like I had a PSP in sixth grade. Mm-hmm. But the Vita thing, I know there's a lot of uh, of ride or die Vita Vita Ians, Vita Ians. Vita Ians? Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you guys do you guys have a name for yourself? Sure, I uh, just Vita Island. Habitants. Vita Island. Yeah. Okay. Vita well, you Island. you inhabitants over there spelling out help with your driftwood, pretty much. You know, it's good that what you bought is still will still be there. That's yeah. nice. Um, you know, and we talked a little bit about it earlier, but I mean, this could be like a a Sega Saturn situation where like everything is so expensive, you can't like <laughs> you need to get it yeah. now because in like eight months it's going to be five hundred dollars to buy us a Vita game mm-hmm. on eBay. And the weird part is, is by doing this, they're creating it such they're they're basically creating a a, a market to where their their system, the Vita system is going to just like almost tenfold increase in value, but they're not going to make any money off of it, which is odd. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, I guess not bittersweet, but it's, it's disappointing, but it's it, like we said last week or like I said last week, you know, it's, a, it was expected, but unexpected in a way because, you know, I get PS3 and PSP, you know, they're 15 and 16 years old. You know, that's long enough. Uh, the Vita though, only being nine years old, that's, not really. That's kind of unprecedented for Sony. I mean, the PlayStation Four is uh, what is it came out thirteen, so we're only a couple of years away from being ten. It being ten years old, they're not going to shut down the PS Four store. However, I understand that there's a hundred million PS Fours out there, and there's nine million Vitas. But um, you know, it's pretty. It's pretty crazy. Not that anybody's ever going to go back and play all of these games, all twenty two hundred of these. But there, there's some good stuff that's going to be, you know, stranded. Uh, no longer be able to be purchased. Um, there's been different lists on Reddit and stuff going around, and there's some pretty big heavy hitters that you know you'll you'll never get you'll never be able to play. Well, you'll be able to play if you have it, but n- not go be able to go buy it, which is kind right. of insane. <laughs> and it's like we talked about last week. It's just Sony and Microsoft just like totally going two different directions on this in terms of backwards compatibility. Or one of one of my other thoughts about the Vita stuff to your point about pricing going up is you're already starting to see that like you know i've been kind of working on my 
Vita collection, my physical games. I think I've told you I've gotten some here and there, and I'm pretty. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say that I'm done with collect with getting the physical games. I had like a case that held games, and I was like, I'm just gonna fill this thing up and be done with it. So I have bought several here in the past few weeks, and a lot of those, most of them, have already doubled and tripled in price on eBay, which is which is crazy. <laughs> just in a, just in a week since they've announced that. So. I think that's just going to get worse. There was already some that were really expensive to begin with because they were just rare. And then now the fact that, Mm -hmm. you know, the only way you'll be able to buy it, you know, is, is physical. It's only, like you said, it's going to make it skyrocket. I did see today a PlayStation portable for 55 bucks at game exchange. And don't think that the the thought didn't cross my mind because I've never played the the PSP, (laughs) but I I mean, I didn't, I didn't need it. Mm -hmm. So I decided against it, but, uh, I've gotten I've gotten several several good games here lately for the Vita, and then I've got a I've got a couple of games that I do still want to buy from the the digital store before it closes in August. Um, the God of War collection and then uh, Ratchet and Clank trilogy is on there. You can get for the Vita, so I'll do that before it closes. But it's um I don't know, man. It's crazy. It's it's unfortunate, especially for the Vita, and uh, you know, long live the Vita. But uh, I don't know. We'll see if down the road they come up with some type of solution for backwards compatibility to be able to play some of these old games but i don't know i doubt it they're it doesn't seem like they're really interested in doing that but could be wrong number two and another unique twist to the saga of playstation releasing their first playstation studios title on a rival platform xbox announced this week travis that mlb the show 21 will launch for free on their game pass service which is a blend of both playstation plus and playstation now for their ecosystem the formerly annual PlayStation exclusive title will, of course, launch for full price on PS4 and PS5 on April 20th. And it should be noted that the Xbox versions of the game are being published by the MLB itself, perhaps playing a part in the parody of console launch plans. So, I know this is somewhat Xbox news, but feel like we should talk about it. What are your thoughts? You know, obviously, this is a, a, a W for Xbox. I would say it's it's a game that's pretty much free. Um, mm-hmm. It's kind of a a kick in the nuts if you're PlayStation. Like it doesn't look good on PlayStation that Xbox is bringing these sort of. I mean, this game is always in the top what twenty, fifteen yeah. sells every year. So they are bringing a, a game that sells well for free to their to their system to their platform. So makes you wonder what place like. It kind of makes you feel like we're getting to a point where PlayStation is going to have to make a decision. Like, do we do something like Xbox is doing with Game Pass, or we just double down on our on our on our flow i'm not really sure i would love to know playstation's perspective like inside of the boardroom i would love to hear that yeah i i so i have a couple thoughts about this first of all i i feel like one of two things happened either sony negotiated this so fucking bad that they didn't think to or they couldn't get in the contract that Microsoft could not announce or could not release this for free on their console uh, on on game pass, either that or the MLB when they negotiated this just absolutely strong arm Sony and said, look, if you guys are going to make this game, you want to keep this license, then you just need to make the game for you guys and for Xbox and then fuck off. Like we'll, we'll take it from there. Like sit in the Mm -hmm. truck. We've got it. And then, the MLB went to Xbox and they were like, Hey, we want to release this for free on game. Pa- or, well, you know, not for free, I guess, but on game pass. And they're like, Oh, okay, cool. Because you know, Xbox, right. Xbox knows that's a huge middle finger to Sony. So exactly. Yeah. So now the situation that we're in is that people who have been playing MLB, the show for years, only on PlayStation, who've been, you know, paying full price for it at launch every year and beyond and paying money in general for it. Uh, you know, beyond that now, they're seeing it come to Xbox for the first time and it's not going to cost those people anything because the, the people who already have their subscription, they're just going to have it. And that's, you know, that's, that's a bad look for Sony. Uh, that's a bad yeah. look for PlayStation. And I think that, I don't think that they're going to do anything about it. That just doesn't seem like that's their style. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you they're pissed about it. And I, I just don't think that there's anything, anything that they can do. Um, yeah, they don't want to look like they're making a direct reaction to it, but they really, 
my guess is they would have never negotiated that and allowed that to happen. Right. Because they they had they would have had to have considered that Xbox would want to do something like that. Like you'd think. I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, just because PlayStation doesn't release new games on their shit day one, I mean, that's what Xbox does. You would have to have it. Somebody, somebody at PlayStation would have to have that idea. So, right. So my gut just the tells MLB, me. Go ahead. Yeah, I think that's it. I think the MLB, what you said earlier, I think they basically told them like, hey, like you said. Also, they're published in the game, which you which you said before. Like, I feel like they went to PlayStation and said, hey, we'll take care of it after you make the game. Yeah. Don't worry about it. And they probably, I wouldn't be surprised if. The, if Xbox went to when the MLB came to Xbox, they said, "Hey, we can put this on Game Pass." Right. Like, you're not you're not going to lose any money because people are still going to buy it on PlayStation. It might have been their pitch. Yeah, yeah, they, they yeah exactly. And they will just say, "Look, we'll put it on Game Pass this year, so people know what it is." And the next year, you'll you know you'll sell 15 million copies on Xbox. Yeah, it might be free <laughs> next year. Which too, that's a good point. It might not be free next year. Mm-hmm. It might just be a one off thing, which I hadn't really considered. But mm-hmm. you know, that kind of brings up the next point: is how do they make any money? By releasing these games for free on Game Pass, like if you if I pay sixty dollars for Game Pass and I get a hundred games like this, you know I'm paying whatever that is six cents, sixty cents a game. Mm-hmm. There's no there's no way to split that money up in a way that makes it worth it for the developers to have that you know licensing go to Game Pass. So I don't really know how they make money. I would like to understand how that works. I just don't understand. Yeah, I hear you. Game Pass looks like a money losing proposition, right? I mean, every everything you're saying, it it doesn't look like there's any way that Game Pass makes money. But Microsoft has way more money to blow than Sony does in general. So, uh, the the last thing I want to say about this is that I think it's odd that the MLB is publishing this game. I don't know if that's something that happens like normally, like with uh, for instance with the NBA with 2k or you know the nfl with madden i mean i don't i I really i think the answer is no they don't publish those because i'm pretty sure that ea pub ea publishes madden and then 2k publishes nba so at least i think i just feel like that's odd that the mlb is doing that and maybe maybe the reason that mlb is publishing the game on xbox is because xbox may have wanted some type of like like chinese wall or something between the two like some type of barrier so that you know, Sony mm-hmm. can't find out about Xbox and maybe they both wanted it. I don't know, but I just feel like Sony got bent over on this and now they're just having to eat it. Number three, PlayStation announced the PlayStation Plus lineup for April on Wednesday. It's another solid month with the previously announced Oddworld Soulstorm launching for free on the PlayStation 5. It is joined by Days Gone and Zombie Army 4 Dead War on PS4. All three games will be available to claim and download from April the 6th until may the 3rd what do you think about the lineup it's a i think it's a pretty good lineup it's um you know probably not as big as getting the show for free but <laughs> uh-huh <laughs> uh see, see know, what i'm talking about yeah Day, days gone is has a nice following people like that game a lot i'm not going to play it uh but i understand that odd world looks cool odd world i mean i'll claim them mm-hmm. in case i get a wild hair and decide to play these with odd world and, and days gone odd world looks cool i like the environment of it and i like kind of like the nostalgia of it but i don't know if i'll ever play it yeah you know we talked about playing zombie army it's the same guys that make sniper elite you still get some of that x-ray killing vision stuff it's pretty sweet um yeah i think that game looks interesting we might try out the co-op and see what that's about yeah i uh i'm i agree i think i'm gonna play you know we talked about playing the zombie army game i've never played a zombie army i've played sniper elite like you were saying so it's got to be similar there with the same people so um i'm excited to check that out with you and then i actually am uh pretty interested in odd world soulstorm i wouldn't buy it but the fact that it's free i've never played an odd world game ever uh i know they've been around for a long time on playstation consoles so i'm interested to see what it's about and I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll like it, maybe I won't, but free is a good, uh, good entry point. And, uh, uh, Days Gone's a big one for PS4. If, if you haven't played that, I recommend everybody to play that. I never finished it, so I can't recommend it too heavily, I guess, but it's, it's definitely worth checking out if you've never played it or been on the fence about it. But, uh, it's a pretty strong month. I will say this, even though the, the show bullshit or whatever is, you know, overshadowing this. Sony since January really uh with PlayStation well really since the PS5 has launched but definitely since January or February with PlayStation Plus they've really kind of stepped their game up it's been it's been pretty good offerings 
uh, mm-hmm. each of these last few months. So can't got to give them credit a little bit. Number four, The Witcher and Cyberpunk 2077 developer CD Projekt Red released a strategic development update this week, which outlined the company's future. The update included a number of newsworthy items, including that the company will transition to parallel game development in 2022, meaning that simultaneous development on a new Witcher and Cyberpunk games will begin development next year. The company also announced that the multiplayer component of Cyberpunk 2077 has been canceled but that they will be implementing multiplayer elements in all future games. And finally, CD Projekt Red announced, or I'm sorry, confirmed that the next-gen updates for both Cyberpunk 2077 and The Witcher 3 are still on track for the later part of this year. Any thoughts? Yeah, yeah I got a couple of thoughts here. Um, mm-hmm. The first is maybe we should worry about you know single development, not dual development <laughs> right now. Um, uh-huh. the, uh, what I'm reading between the lines is if they don't get cyberpunk ironed out in the next year that i feel like they're going to move on to something else Mm. because they've already canceled the multiplayer so what does that tell you like they were just like listen single player so messed up just fuck the multiplayer right that's what i'm reading there so (laughs) i'm curious about what this means Uh, is it going to get like anthem where it gets killed off at some point they cut their losses i feel like that's going to happen at some point Mm -hmm. when they get these next gen updates out you know, I, I wonder how much more we'll see from from Cyberpunk. It's odd to me. I don't know. I just read that like they're gonna kill off Cyberpunk at some point and then start another AAA game with the new Witcher. No, I I had never really considered that, but there you might be right about that. I, I I so first of all, I guess to your point, I don't. How can you make two games at one time? Because they've already proven that with Cyberpunk that they can't even make one. You know, the other kind of thought about that is how do you make, what what do you even get by making two games simultaneously? And what I mean, what what I mean by that is like, are you going to release the Witcher and Cyberpunk in both in 2025 or whatever? Like, no, you're not going to do that. They, they're, they can't do that for their, for for, even from a financial standpoint, you know what I mean? Like they're not going to release the Witcher in March and Cyberpunk in November of 2025. Like. I just can't imagine that they would do that. So I don't know what they're gaining by doing this. Uh, I mean, they talked about like sharing expertise between teams and and yada, yada, yada. But like at some point, dude, you like you're overcomplicating things. You know what I mean? And it it doesn't sound like overcomplication is what they need right now at all. Yeah. I mean, they bit off more than they could chew with Cyberpunk clearly. Yeah. Doing dual development seems like, Another step in that direction. Yeah, their their stock price fell after they announced this, so their <laughs> their their investors must be just as skeptical as we are. They, they must not have liked what they heard either. So I, I don't know, man. But uh, the last thing I'll say though, how, uh, even though all the bullshit aside, when they release the next gen updates for The Witcher and Cyberpunk, I will play them both and and check them out. So I love The Witcher. The Witcher is a great game. Um, they they fell off the wagon with Cyberpunk, but. I'll check them both out and we'll see what's up. We'll see if they can do it. Because, I mean, technically they're working on two next, they're working on two games, I guess, right now in a way, you know, The Witcher and Cyberpunk. So we'll see, yeah, I guess somewhat of what they can do there. Number five, Travis, we also have uh, a bunch of news nuggets here. So feel free to jump in wherever tickles your, your fancy. First nugget here. Developer Orock Digital announced that their homebrewing simulation game Brew- uh-huh. Brewmaster <laughs> will be coming to PlayStation sometime in 2022. <laughs> Developer Hello Games announced the arrival of a new update for No Man's Sky, <laughs> which is alive now. Were you shitting yourself because that game sounds like shit, or just you just had to do it? I just you just sounded like it's a shitty game. Who wants to set it? Who wants to set it at home and pretend to be a brewmaster? I don't understand. Just whatever. It's like lawnmower. The lawnmower game on on Xbox. Like that's fucking cool. I don't even want to mow my own lawn. I don't want to go in the fucking basement and pretend to mow it either. I want to come home from my day job cutting grass all day, and I want to get on that fucking Toro and keep on going. Oh, man. Okay. (laughs) Developer Hello Games announced the arrival of a new update for No Man's Sky, which is live now. The update adds the Expeditions game mode, which will bring seasonal content to the game. 
Battlefield leaker Tom Henderson stated on Twitter that this year's game will be simply called Battlefield and will be set in the near future, and also that the campaign will feature a co-op mode. Sounds kind of cool. Like, it sounds like the first time I'll play the campaign in a while. Yeah. It's also interesting that Battlefield and Call of Duty are going to go head-to-head this year. If yeah. this comes out on time, it doesn't get delayed. We haven't seen that in a while. I'm not sure the last time yeah. that happened. Yeah. Maybe Battlefield 4, maybe? Because I feel like one came out in the middle of the spring. I know I know I that. I think, so one, no, five came out. I don't know about one, but five came out at the end of October because they released, EA released Battlefield 5 one week and then they released Titanfall 2 the following week. They cannibalized their own games. And nice. I think neither one sold very well. Like they sold well, you know, relatively, but for those franchises, they didn't sell as well as they should have, you know? So yeah, right. that'll be interesting to watch. I'm I'm interested in a, in a co-op mode or a co-op campaign. That, that would be fun. Also, Travis' website, Push Square, reported that Call of Duty Warzone will be getting a reduction in file size on the PS5 with a reduction of up to 30, gigabyte, 30 gigabytes. EA's Dodge Brawler game, Knockout City, is having an open cross-play beta from April 2nd to April 4th. Cyberpunk 2077 received its 1.2 update this week, which included hundreds of fixes for the game on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. However, I watched. Uh, yeah, go ahead. No, I was. Gonna, I bet you're going to say the same thing. I was going to say, even though they've updated it, I've already seen on Twitter people tweeting out videos of how the game is even worse, and they've broken. Yes. They've broken other stuff. Yeah, I watched the video. So they, they first thing they did was they scrolled through the update list, and it's like, you know, eight pages on Microsoft Word or something stupid <laughs> like yeah. that. It's hilarious. And then, huh. yeah. um. You, you, that's like an interdepartmental memo you get um like a, like at the end of the week like this is what we worked on this week that's like what it looks like to me <laughs> um it's so bad it's so big mm-hmm. but um yeah so on the video it was all kinds of stuff like cars were getting stuck on top of like cattle fence and they would they couldn't fall <laughs> off they were just balanced perfectly hilarious and um there was all kinds of stuff that like would populate and then disappear populate and disappear while they were like out there and weird stuff was happening with like some of the characters. Um, you know, there's still nobody in the city, hmm. which I mean, why would that change? And then the NPCs are still doing weird shit, like just like walking out in the middle of traffic or falling off of, of like balconies, like all of that was still happening. And um, so I think that the, some of the stuff they fixed is making other weird stuff happen, which is even better. You know, the unforeseen issues, you, know, you plug one hole and another one opens. Yeah. So my, my big issue with the game that, and I don't know that they can fix this is, you know, it just, it, it just, the world seems dead. Like there's nothing, there's very little going on in the world, in the open world in the game. There's no, it's not like Red Dead, like there's dynamic stuff that pops up and there's random shit that happens. Like there isn't that in Cyberpunk. It's literally like, okay, go somewhere, get a quest, go to point B, do the thing, you know, do the shit, whatever. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. Some of the quests are cool. The characters are neat, whatever. But beyond that, like there's nothing going on. Uh, and I don't know, I don't know that, I don't know that, that that they can fix that. I don't even know that. I mean, that that seems like a lot of work. And maybe it was right. never supposed to be that way. So I don't know. We'll see. It's weird that Rockstar can do that and nobody else can. I've always wondered that. Is it that complicated or is it that, is it a creativity, a lack of creativity, or is it a lack of skill? Like, right. how hard is it in which way? Right. Yeah. I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a fair question. Also, Travis Ratchet and Clank developer Insomniac Games released the aforementioned 60 frames per second update for the 2016 remake, which was recently part of the Play at Home campaign. EA Sports announced that their golf or announced their golf game competitor, which will be called EA Sports PGA Tour, with more information coming later this summer. Next Gen PSVR got confirmation of its first game this week, a multiplayer FPS called Pavlov Shack. Developer Van Krupp Games said the current gen headset does not have the fidelity needed for the game. Cyberpunk virtual reality open world sandbox game Lo-Fi was also confirmed for the next gen PSVR. We already have a Lo-Fi Cyberpunk game. They just got an update. Oh, really? Yeah, Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, you're right. It is very, it's very Lo-Fi. Uh, Final Fantasy 14 will get a PS5 open beta beginning on April 13th. Multiplayer survival game Rust will come out of beta and launch on PS4 on May 21st. Tried the beta of that and it, it it's not for me. Also, Travis roguelike adventure game The Binding of Isaac Repentance will come to PS4 and PS5 in the quarter third quarter of this year. I mean that that sounds 
that just sounds like a really tough game to play. That does not sound fun. It sounds yeah. like it sounds like fire and brimstone. I I've, I've never played it. It's it's very beloved. It's a big uh cult hit, but by all accounts the game is very difficult. So, I don't think I'll do it. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Cycling Simulator Tour de France 2021 or Tour de France 2021, I guess I should say, will launch on PS4 and PS5 on June 3rd. Are you looking forward to that? Yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited. So I'm going to get a cycling simulator in the house. I'm going to get one of those, (laughs) uh, one of those wheel, one of those cycles from the gym. And then I'm going to see um, how tiny I can make my cyclers balls when I do HGH. (laughs) Dude, I, I've told you there's something right now about these simulation games. They're just, it's just, it's taken off. It's like Battle Royale two years ago. Like now it's simulation games. So Yeah, which I'm glad it's not Battle Royale anymore. That's that's all I'm happy about. Right. Yeah. Also, Sony announced that they've struck a deal for the PlayStation 5 to be the official console of the NBA 2K League. They're really doubling down on competitive sports here lately. That's interesting. PS5 sales have been steadily increasing in Japan as stock of the console have increased with over 500,000 units now being sold. So I think we can quit panicking over Japan. Also, Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga has been delayed out of its spring 2021 release window with no future release date given. And finally, Push Square reported that Watch Dogs Legion will be getting a 60 frames per second mode in a future update on PlayStation 5. Website PlayStation Lifestyle reported that Gravity Rush character designer and animator Shinsuke Saito and senior producer Kintaro Motomura have both departed from what is left of Sony Japan Studio. And also, later in the week, Puppeteer and Demon Souls remake director Gavin Moore also departed the studio after 24 years with Sony Interactive Entertainment. So that studio is pretty much all gone now. Also, a PlayStation 5 version of Demolition Racer Wreckfest will be releasing on June 1st, featuring enhanced visuals, haptic feedback, improved loading times, and dynamic dirt, Travis. The upgrade will cost PS4 owners of the game $10. God, that, those loading times of the game were a bitch. This kind of makes me want to go back and try that again. You know, it didn't click the first time, but I don't know. If the I'm... dynamic dirt will be interesting because it's hard enough to drive that shit anyway. Right. Yeah. You get in, like, I imagine you get like caught in a rut or something like that, I guess. Yeah. If it's anything like Codemasters has dynamic dirt on Dirt Rally and like mm-hmm. if you drive later on in the in the stage, uh, the road will get progressively worse. So you can hit little ruts and like it will like flip the car. That's nuts. <laughs> That'd be that's that's, bad. It's like that's kind of awesome though. Also, Nordisk Games, the parent company of Avalanche Studios, has acquired a minority stake or a minority ownership stake in Until Dawn and Dark Pictures developer Supermassive Games. Sony will pay its Japanese employees record high bonuses following a strong financial year, with some receiving up to seven months worth of salary. Must be Damn. yeah, must be nice. Jesus. BioWare Chief of Staff and Anthem Director Jonathan Warner has left the studio. Veteran Assassin's Creed writer Darby McDevitt, great name, has departed from (laughs) Ubisoft as well. Also, PlayStation Lifestyle reported that Dying Light 2 developer Techland revealed this week that the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions of the game were the quote-unquote main versions of the game, but also shared that on PS5 the game will feature graphics and performance modes as well as ray tracing. Hmm. How much do you think they would have to pay the weekend to redo uh, "Blinded by the Light" as "Dying by the Dying Light"? Just sing it. That would be an awesome commercial. That would be. That'd be a great commercial. It'd sell a lot of games, honestly. Um, I, I gotta say, I'm a little turned off by the fact that they're saying that the PS4 version, the last gen versions of this game, are the are the main versions. That's a that's, that's interesting. Yeah, interesting way to to word that. Yeah, I mean. I guess it's been in development so long that it that's it's just by default, you know, like <clears throat> they started on this thing like whatever uh, six or seven years ago. So I guess they didn't really have a choice uh, back then, but still it's kind of a turnoff. Website PlayStation Universe reported that the Ghost Runner IP has been acquired by publisher 505 Games. Shark RPG Maneater will receive a new DLC titled Truth Quest sometime this summer. Life is Strange and Vampire Developer Don't Nod revealed they have six unannounced games currently in development. HBO's The Last of Us series will begin filming this July in Calgary, Canada. Calgary? Calgary? That's uh, surprising to me that they're filming that in Calgary. Um, you know, it's called The Last of United States. <laughs> it is. It's The Last of United States. Thank you. I, you like my little typo there? 
<laughs> yeah, you capital the U.S. It's high Reddit. Oh, uh, the last of the United States. Yeah, I mean it. Basically, it basically is. So, <laughs> also, Travis, PlayStation Universe reported that Games Beat reporter Jeff Grubb stated on a recent podcast that Alan Wake Two is in development at Remedy Entertainment, who have partnered with Epic Games to publish the title. So that's happening, and that's pretty dope. I've I'd forgotten about the first one. I'd, yeah, you know what I mean. Like those those. I know that game was really good. Yeah. It's just funny how like there's weird good games that just sort of fall into a black hole in your head. <clears throat> yeah. Did, so the first Alan Wake game has never been available on a PlayStation console. Did you know that? I did not. Yeah. I played it on 360. And uh, that's right. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. It's a good game. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about a second one because control was really good. I enjoyed that. So we'll see what they can do here. I, I'm going to guess that the first one will come to PlayStation at some point before that, but we'll see. Website Gamatsu reported that arcade twin-stick shooter Tiny Troopers Global Ops will launch on PS4 and PS5 sometime this year. Man, I've got a lot of typos here, don't I? <laughs> I have a lot of questions about this game. Like When I see Tiny Soldiers, I think of two things. I think of toy soldiers yeah. and the green guys, and then I think of like midgets dressed up in military uniforms. <laughs> Both of those are hilarious to me, and I'm not... Uh. Um, I and mean, Global Ops is suddenly a really big game if you're a midget. It is. It's, a, it's like you know what I mean. It's like twice as big as a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> it's even me. more amazing that it's coming to PS4 and PS4. Yeah, I mean they're doubling down on the PS4. They really are. Yeah, it's a cool typo by me. Also, Travis Gamatsu reported that puzzle platformer Lumote will release on PS4 later this year. That Lemmings style puzzle game Ten Hearts will launch on PS4 and PS5 this winter. That World War II FPS Enlisted will leave paid closed beta and switch to an open beta on PS5 starting on April 8th. You sent me a great email back. So <laughs> we were emailing about this and, and when they announced this, they put out another little trailer. So, you, you know, we're watching the trailer. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what I said to you, but you wrote, you wrote back this email where you were like, I can't believe that they had this closed beta and wanted me to pay money for a game that's going to be free. That's ridiculous. And look how well it played off for them now. They're moving straight to an open beta. Anyway, I'll download it. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. Uh, yeah. I mean, I swear to God, like two weeks ago, I swear like two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago at the most, we were talking about this, how they had, it was in closed beta and you had to pay $30 to buy like a pack or whatever. Remember? Mm-hmm. And then now I like, t- fast forward two or three weeks. I'm like, oh, hey, it's going to be free on open beta. Okay, well, I mean, were you going to try to you scan people for three fucking weeks? Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah. Like, what's that about? Jesus Christ. It's, sometimes it pays off to wait. Anyway, yeah. So, I, well, anyway, we'll download that on the 8th. Also, publisher Koei Tecmo announced a blue reflection tie for the PS4. No release date was given, however. Developer Pixel Heart announced Andro Dunos 2, a sequel to the 1992 side scrolling shoot 'em up. It will launch on PS4 and Sega, Sega, Sega Dreamcast sometime this year. So what about that? Wait, what? Yeah, it's so it's launching everywhere. It's launching PS4. <laughs> Why? Why is it on it's launching. It's launching on PS4, and you know, obviously, I'm not going to list Xbox and Switch, but it's on there too. And then they they're releasing it on Dreamcast as well. I don't know. I just I have a lot of questions. I don't know. No idea, but uh, that's pretty wild that they're still... Well, I, don't even, well, I don't know what the fuck they're doing that for, but that's cool. Good for them. Maybe they'll put it on GameCube. Yeah. Also, turn-based tactical RPG Lost Eidolons will come to consoles sometime in 2022. RPG Astria Ascending from Artisan Studios will launch on PS4 and PS5 later this year. Science fiction thriller Deliver Us the Moon will come natively to PlayStation 5 at some point in the future. Bullet Hell arcade game Sturmfront, the Mutant War U-Bell edition, will release on PS4 on April 2nd, with a PS5 version coming later in the future. Uh. Oh. First-person narrative adventure game The Last Worker will launch on PS5 in 2022. Retro arcade adventure game Arcade Paradise was announced for PS4 and PS5 and will launch sometime this year. Uh. Romantic... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a gassy boy. Are you gonna leave those in? I don't know. I might. <laughs> oh man, it's that dinner coming back to get me. Oh, okay. 
romantic comedy visual novel sequel, Arcade Spirits, the new Challengers will launch on PS4 and PS5 in early 2022. That sounds fucking terrible. It really does. Who, who, yeah, why would you want to play a rom com? Oh, gosh, damn it. What's wrong with you people? <laughs> also, Travis, 2v2 tag fighting game. Two how, who, 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 Antinomy of common flowers. Can't make this shit up. <laughs> Watch on PS4 in the West on April 22nd. Man, I can't fucking wait for that one. You gonna pick that up? Well, the, <laughs> when you when you read the first part, two v two tag team fighting, you're like, all right. And then you read, you know, <laughs> Benny Hanna, whatever. You're like, okay. And then, <laughs> and then it's just it's just common flowers. And, like that doesn't make any sense. None of that. Doing. None of that makes sense. Like just call it Tech and Tag Tournament. That's perfect. Like, what's wrong with tech and tag? Like, just gosh damn. Like, I don't know. Do how who you who who you bana antinomy of common flowers. I don't even know what antinomy means. I don't know. You have to say it like you're like you're Japanese. Or like to who who you bana. <laughs> Let me look this up. Let me look up what antinomy means. I think um and antinomy can't. Talk is it like that. antimony? I don't even know what that means. And that's what I yeah anten. It means antinomy. It's what a, it's the opposite of nomi. Antinomy definition. Antinomy is a contradiction between two beliefs or conclusions that are that are in themselves reasonable. That didn't help. So it's the the flowers aren't common. The example says there are not many short novels capable of accommodating bewildering antinomies. I don't know what the fuck that means. It sounds like somebody tried to be really smart and then they used a word that nobody has ever knows. used before or knows, and then they <laughs> named their game after calling it Two How Hu Yabana. They, they threw that in there. It's three straight words nobody knows. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh anyway. <laughs> also, Go ahead. Is it, is it short novel a contradiction? Maybe that's what they mean. Maybe that's what they mean. It you, you oh. can't be a short novel, but it isn't that why is that just another word for contradiction? Like, I don't fucking yeah. get it. Just it's like being a tall midget. <laughs> why do we have so many? The, gosh, damn. Like, why do we have so many words for stuff? Like, I don't get it. Like, I, why can't we have one word? <laughs> mocking, I voted for Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's my fucking president. Oh, oh man. Bill, I like my flag to be three colors. <laughs> <laughs> These killers don't <laughs> run, boy. Jesus Christ. I don't know, man. Anyway, good for them. They figured out a big fucking word. <laughs> also, <laughs> Travis, Gamatsu reported that virtual reality game, Sam and Max, this time it's virtual, will come to PSVR in early 2022. <laughs> 2D action adventure. <laughs> Go ahead. Vir- vir- virtual. Virtual. This time it's virtual. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, I was in the shit this week trying to type this motherfucker. I'm sorry. Virtual. This time it's virtual. Anyway, uh, that's what you take for real erectile dysfunction. <laughs> that's what you take for. That's what you take when you have an anti- antinomy dysfunction. <laughs> really? Yeah. I had to get my antinomy removed. <laughs> oh, I had an antinomy one time. Really? It was very tall. <laughs> oh, okay. Fuck are we at? All right. Gamatsu. Go ahead. The sol- the soldiers on that tiny soldier game aren't very tall. <laughs> no, they're not very tall at all. Oh god. Uh, ooh, okay. Gamatsu reported that 2D action adventure platformer Moon Raider will release on PS4 on April 23rd. Pixel art Metroidvania game, the Skylea Prophecy, will come to PS4 on April 23rd. Platinum Games developed shoot 'em up Soul Cresta was announced for PS4, but no release date was given. Pizzeria Simulator, <laughs> Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator <laughs> is now available <laughs> on PS4. Oh God, I don't know why that made me laugh so much. Well, the funny part is, is they put Freddy Fazbear in front of it, like it's a, like, <laughs> like it's supposed to make you buy the game. Like, like if it said Le- Leonardo DiCaprio's Pizza Simulator, <laughs> you'd be like, oh, okay, Leo. Uh, but like, I got to who the fuck Freddy Fazbear is. She might as well said Mickey Mouse's Pizza Simulator. Right. Oh, um, wow. Played to Michael Fosbender. <laughs> <laughs> Fosbear fucker. Oh man. Wow. There's another simulator though. 
Gamatsu reported that a PS5 version of The Elder Scrolls Online will launch on June 8th, featuring 4K resolution at 60 frames per second and other graphical sure. enhancements. You okay? Yeah. I, you know, I've never played this game, uh, the online version, but I may. This may get me there. They also reported that third-person voxel-style shooter Earth Defense Force World Brothers will launch digitally on PS4 on May 27th. Square Enix has merged its Visual Works division and Image Arts division to form Square Enix Image Studio division. <laughs> creative name. <laughs> Very creative. It's way better than Benny Hanna antimony up there. All right. I get excited when they have really cool names. And I just I wanted Square Enix. Because Square Enix is a cool name. Yeah. Like I wish they would have done something cool with whatever. It's fine. Yeah. Speaking of cool names. Here we go. Also. Travis, Dead or Alive series director Yohei Shimbori has departed from developer Koei Tecmo. CD Projekt Red has acquired Vancouver-based de- development studio Digital Scape Studios and rebranded it as CD Projekt Red Vancouver. Adventure game Laidback Camp Virtual Fumoto Campsite will launch on PS4 on April 8th. Virtua Fighter V Ultimate Showdown has been rated for PS4 in Korea, which means a release of that is imminent. Fast-paced first-person ninja game Ghost Runner will get a native PS5 version sometime this fall with a free upgrade for PS4 owners. And finally, Gamatsu reported that the Tokyo Game Show will be an online-only event again in 2021 due to the COVID pandemic. And that is all for the news this week. And I'll now kick it over to Travis for this week's new games. Uh, before we jump into the new games, I want to uh, jump over to the NBA real quick and let you know that my phone keeps telling me that Joel Embiid is back, and the fans are excited about it, and I couldn't give less of a fuck. <laughs> Where's he been? Jamaica or wherever the fuck he's from? I don't know. I don't know, whatever. He's annoying. All right. New game releases this week, and I got to tell you, I don't think there's one I would play. So here we go. On the 29th, Doom 3 VR Edition. On the 30th, Auto Chess, Disco Elysium. I saw Black Clouds, which looks fucking terrible like <laughs> it's one of those games where they're you know the actors are alive again what are, what are those called uh i never remember F- what F- fmv clearly. games the fmv yeah, yeah. fmv yeah right anyway. full motion video that's what that means following that we have undermine and void bastards deluxe edition i, I miss the normal edition so anyway the deluxe edition's out now if you enjoyed the standard edition of void bastards <laughs> on the 31st easter candy break Escape from Life, Inc., Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, Newtonian Inversion, which I tried to look up the game, and it was trying to tell me some like weird bullshit about physics, so I gave up. Also on the 31st, we have Squad Killer. On April 1st, and these games are no joke, Akalesia, Out Buddies DX, Outriders, and Road Fury. And that is all for the new games. If you change one letter in Out Buddies, all of a sudden you have Butt Buddies. Oh, you have butt I was trying to figure out what letter you were going to change. I, I, I thought you were going to say Our Buddies. <laughs> <laughs> butt Buddies Dicks. <laughs> that's, that's a pretty good game. Hopefully yeah. it's not FMV. Yeah. <laughs> you can get FMV of that, though, if you're looking for it. I bet you can. Oh. Um, by the way, Outriders, which was uh, mediocre, but definitely a good time killer, yeah. and it's it's not a terrible game if you have people to play it with. Like yeah. if it was like a a twenty hour co op game and it was like thirty or forty bucks, I'd be down. But yeah, it's it's already getting like some pushback online for being an online. What do you call it? like an online single player game? I guess. Oh yeah, I thought that was interesting because it's I don't feel like that's warranted for what it is, but it, it seems like that there's people with an agenda where they want to kill games like that. And I don't think that's necessary. Like, yeah. it's okay that it exists. It's, there's nothing wrong with the game. No, it's fine. We enjoyed it. It's, it's okay. It's fine. It's like six or seven in my opinion. Um, yeah, yeah I, it, it's a, I, I have, a, I feel it. In, I have a feeling in my gut that it's going to be a PlayStation plus game in like, right. in like nine or 10 months. I just really feel that. And like, you know, our wives married sixes and sevens and they're happy. So there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> right. You just, people can live with it. It's fine. It's all about, it's all about perspective. So that's all for the new game releases this week. Travis, let's start to wrap the episode up here. Uh, I think we've, we've, we're lucky to even to have made it to this point the way it's been going. So tell me about what you're going to be, going to be playing in the week ahead. What's on your radar? Well, right now I'm going to finish um, whatever Hitman level I'm on. Mm-hmm. 
I have two save points right now because I told you I always do my manual saves. So I might go back because I found a trick after the fact. I found I realized I could have done something after the fact, which would have made the, the level like actually easy. So I'm going to go back to that save point real quick. Yeah. Anyway, I'll probably beat that. Hell, I might beat it tomorrow. I might just sit down and play it tomorrow. Nice. I think I have a league race this Wednesday at 9. If I do, I'll live stream it. But oh, yeah. it's either it's either this Wednesday or next Wednesday. Our preseason training was last Wednesday. I didn't do it because I didn't I didn't care. And um, <laughs> the training was not even on the track that we're racing on. So it was kind of pointless to me. That doesn't make uh, sense. I don't even know if the track we were practicing on even is on our on our schedule but the thing i think we're racing at laguna sega this week sega and the cars we're using for it are like the lamas cars and like i'm telling you like it'll be a fucking shit show you got to pick the right tracks with these cars and as fun as that track is to drive it'll be terrible in these cars Mm. i don't know anyway so we'll see other than that um i'm having a lot of fun with my scotland team still um i finally got a youth player to an 80 overall Oh wow! I got a my goalie is like a seventy eight, but I have a fifteen year old goalie on the youth squad who is um, his um, potential is like an eighty seven to a ninety five. Shit! And then I, I have another guy who's like an eighty six to a ninety four. I think he's a midfielder. So like, part of me wants to just start them immediately, but again, you know, it'll still take me three or four years to for them to be good, and it's like. Can I win the Champions League with a goalie who's like a 62? Like, I don't know. <laughs> but I might try it. Yeah. Well, I am uh, also going to play some FIFA this week, probably with, you know, St. Johnston in the Scottish Premiership. And then I want to keep playing some Battlefield, ho- hoping that we can play some tonight, maybe. Uh, and now that I'm done with Ratchet and Clank, or at least done, in my opinion, I'm done. I think it's finally time to try planet coaster been talking a lot i've sh- been talking a lot of shit about this uh several times talking about how i needed to play it but i think this might be the week uh, i'm gonna gonna see what that's about i know it's gonna suck me in and then uh i'm also excited about checking out that enlisted game uh even though we're already playing a world war ii game you know check that out and see what right. see what it's about and maybe it brings something new to the table and then i'm also going to go ahead and check out odd world uh, Soulstorm. Because, uh, you know, it's free and it's kind of piqued my interest. So I'll see if that's worth playing. And then that'll probably be about it. I'll probably play some random Vita games as well. I think I'm done uh, collecting for now. Uh, but that's it. That's a, it's a big week. I'm also, you know, I, I, we're going to have to see uh, what happens with uh, next week's episode. We I'm hoping that uh, I'll feel better as we get to the weekend. But I am getting my second COVID shot next week. So we may have to... May have to call an audible or something we'll see how i do hopefully i'll just you know if i was a stake i would be tough so hopefully i'll just bounce <laughs> hopefully i'll just bounce right back but anyway that's all we have for this episode if you guys enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe so that you never miss an episode we'll be right there in your podcast feed every monday waiting for you 6 a.m sharp also if you would uh, be kind and leave us a comment maybe if you're watching on youtube or leave us a, a rating or a review, you know, give us, you know, a couple stars there on your podcast service. And then finally, if you know someone who may enjoy a podcast such as this, or they can get all of the week's PlayStation news in less than 90 minutes, then please, by all means, share us with a friend. And of course, if you want to talk with us again, you can reach us at Twitter at the DualSense Pod. And our YouTube channel is the DualSense Podcast. We'll get out of here. You guys take care and have a great week. We will talk at you next time.